Look what they did to the millennials. They were raised by doting parents who told them they were special, played in little leagues with no winners or losers or all winners. They are laden with trophies just for participating and they think your business as usual ethic is for the birds. Corporate America, in fact, has been so unnerved by this generation that companies like Merrill Lynch, Ernst & Young, and scores of others have actually hired consultants to teach them how to deal with this generation that only takes yes for an answer. In many respects, the workplace has become a psychological battlefield and the millennials have the upper hand because they are tech-savvy with every gadget imaginable, almost becoming an extension of their bodies. They multitask, talk, walk, listen, and type in text. And their priorities are simple. They come first. So I certainly am not throwing the entire millennial generation under the bus. But I want to show you some examples, not just current, but from several years back. I really want to cover this generation and just show you, once again, how this is truly one of the most indoctrinated and programmed generations of our time. All the aspects of the New World Order agenda we see programmed into the Millennial Generation. Specifically, Agenda 21. If you're not familiar with that, please check that out. And they recently repackaged Agenda 21 to Agenda 2030. Different name, same thing. It's all a part of that one world agenda. They are certainly the most plugged in generation of all time. In a sense, we're exploring the history of the millennial generation through a lot of the news articles and clips that pertained to that generation directly. So let's take a look at what they did to the millennial generation. From way back in 2010, goodbye roll call, hello RFIDs. This was just one of many news stories I found from that time and beyond concerning RFID technology inserted into children's classrooms. There really are some shocking things that many U.S. high schoolers don't know. Another story, as an example, from many years ago, 75% of Oklahoma high school students can't name the first president of the U.S. This says a lot, obviously, and it's not just in Oklahoma, again, this is all over the place, but they seem to be dumbing down the kids on the basics. Again, this story is from a long time ago. Since then, government education is implementing Common Core standards, which of course is making this whole situation much, much worse. From way back in 2011, they were talking about a significant number of students weren't even able to grasp historical concepts as basic as identifying a picture of Abraham Lincoln. And again, a very common headline I found throughout the years, students don't know much about U.S. history. Even here they're saying we are failing to provide children with a high-quality, well-rounded education. And here is another example of that creepy trend throughout this generation of government intrusion into your kids' lives, how the feds are tracking your kids. This article right here was a good example of how all these government groups are starting to blend in with each other, the Department of Education and the Department of Labor actually working together and scrutinizing your kids' academic performances. Indeed, the millennial generation is by far the most tracked generation by the government that we've ever seen. Another development I find time and time again while researching news just throughout the last several years, specifically pertaining to the millennial generation, pint-sized eco-police making parents proud and sometimes crazy. So once again, these children have been indoctrinated with the so-called green agenda, a lot of this global warming stuff, right, for many years, so much so that now they're turning into little eco-police and keeping their parents in line, even telling on their parents to the teachers. And please understand, this is just one story of many that I could have chosen. We're seeing tons of these children from this generation turn into these little social justice warriors, right? They run around and they spout off the same stuff that they've been indoctrinated with through these schools for so many years. We see examples of these indoctrinated slaves or these indoctrinated zombies all around us. Now here's just an example I want you to check out of what this system has created through a lot of these millennials. You don't like it? Yeah! Hey. Yeah! Mark, Mark, Mark. Leave me alone, Mark. Mark, Mark. Yeah! Mark. Yeah! Mark. Yeah! Mark. Yeah! Mark. Mark. Yeah! Mark. Yeah! Mark. Yeah! Mark. Yeah! Mark. Yeah! Mark. 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 Mark. Yeah!
really interesting because at the same time that the system is indoctrinating these kids it's also enslaving these kids and here's just some examples of this five-year-old handcuffed charged with battery on officer and once again one of many stories out there showing how the government is turning your children into little informants CDC now calling US households and demanding child immunization records as part of vaccine surveillance and tracking program Christian student suspended for sharing faith sues school district. Once again, lots of these stories out there. The system has certainly been incredibly unkind to the millennial Christian specifically. Girl arrested for doodling on her desk. 12-year-old girl arrested for doodling on her desk. Even school children are being pepper sprayed and shocked with tasers. An alarming series of incidents offers some insight into how casual police have become about deploying less lethal weapons. A dad was arrested at school after his daughter drew a picture of a gun. And once again, the millennials have seen a huge rise in police force at their schools. Cops summoned a Florida elementary school after girl kisses boy in physical education class. So many examples of this, just examples how the government is trying to take more control over your children. It's just an example right here, but preschoolers' homemade lunch replaced with cafeteria nuggets. They don't even want your mom and dad fixing a meal for you to bring to school. Now, not only are you going to be indoctrinated, but they also want to take care of your health for you and make sure you're only eating government-approved food. A 13-year-old child was handcuffed for burping in class. Ohio schools just started passing out these disturbing police state guides for students. So they're not even hiding anymore. They're putting it right out there once again, you see? They're putting it right out there, right in front of your face. Another really disturbing trend we've seen to the millennials, this really has been the birth of the internet trolls, the internet narcissists, the psychopaths and sadists. We've seen troll culture arise out of this millennial generation. That's not to say every troll at this point is an actual person. We've also seen government trolling step up quite a bit over the last few years. But there really are so many stories out there pertaining to the millennials about how this is the most psychopathic and most narcissistic generation that we've ever seen. There's a really disturbing example of this, actually. There's many of them, but there's one I want to share with you here. And it shows the way these little school children were treating an elderly lady. <laughs> oh, my God, you're so bad. I know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah
And speaking of indoctrination, of course, MTV came out shortly after that story came out about all the girls taking selfies at the game. Now MTV's trying to say you're sexist if you hate selfies. And again, this is just an example of that narcissism, that psychopathic spirit we're seeing more and more. Addicted to posting selfies? Then you're probably selfish and may even be a psychopath, claims study. The system is causing people to do this. The system is causing people to be this. This generation has also been the most indoctrinated when it comes to sexuality. Specifically the LGBT or the gay agenda. And it's not just homosexuality. I mean, these kids are getting hit with everything. I mean, anything goes, it seems, at this point in time, right? Anything goes in our society now. But here's just another very clear example. Sexual activity between teenage girls is higher than ever before, claims new research. It says sexual activity between young girls is reported to have gone up in the last decade while the teen pregnancy has gone down. And they find this because more girls are just fooling with each other and not even dealing with boys anymore. This should come as no surprise, folks. Again, these kids have been indoctrinated with this stuff for years now. I've said it before and I'll say it again. At this rate, within the next five years or so, I wouldn't be surprised if practically every child around the age of 16 everywhere is basically bisexual. And that, my friends, is exactly what this system would like to see. Gay history in U.S. classrooms, again from several years ago. No surprise, right? The indoctrination. You may have seen this one. They put a little boy in a Barbie ad because they aim to bust gender stereotypes. Again, more of the conditioning, right? And here's a picture from the ad. <laughs> Activists press for mandatory gay lessons for kindergartners. That's right, folks. This is real. A big part of that indoctrination has to do with media and artists in general or entertainment. And I've covered this subject in multiple other videos. But in this case right here, just to keep it very simple, you probably remember Katy Perry, I Kissed a Girl, right? Well, that's all part of that conditioning as well. A lot of your kids around 12 years old or so were listening to this stuff, right? So it should be no surprise when they started experimenting with one another. Again, everything works in cycles with this Illuminati entertainment industry always trying to put out agendas. It's not really about entertaining the people anymore or elevating you to a new place through some art form. It's about an agenda. There's a narrative here. So just this past summer we had Demi Lovato, yet another one of these tools. A child that was brought up through the Disney Mind Control Corporation and now they're being used as a tool as most of these mainstream artists are. So she just came out this past year with a song called Cool for the Summer about what? That's right, about being a lesbian. Hey, it's cool for the summer, you know, let's just fool around with each other. But again, you see that same idea. But again, we see the same idea getting put out there. They're trying to indoctrinate the youth. Gay marriage to be taught in schools. Again, another one of those stories from a few years ago, and you can see where we're at now with this, right? So we see the indoctrination. And now we see the completion of the processes, right? When it comes to this indoctrination with, again, this New World Order agenda, if you will. And here's the story here, of course. It's official. Homophobia is now a mental disorder. So now you see where they're going with this, right? The system, whether you like it or not, is going to continue to press this on you, this homosexual agenda. And now we're at a point that if you disagree with it or you're against it, well, you're, you're suddenly a homophobe. You have a mental disorder. There's something wrong with you, right? And there's other examples of where our world's at, not just pertaining to the millennials, but even looking at Generation X, just the generation just ahead of them. Is it any surprise that we are drugged into oblivion? Nearly 60% of all U.S. adults are now on prescription drugs. Middle-aged white Americans in worse health than the elderly. And something else I'd noticed just kind of on the side here, but just another example of how controlled everything seems to be in American society right now. And it really seems to be going that way all around the world as well in many respects. But even in America, if you look at it, all the late night talk show guys, every single one of them in one way or another are in the pocket with Obama. You've seen Jimmy Kimmel, he's pals with Obama, they've done a lot of little skits together. Jimmy Fallon's no different. Jimmy Fallon and Obama, of course. Jimmy also's done a lot of skits with Michelle.
Conan O'Brien's done his time with the White House as well. Even Joel McHale from The Soup, he's done his time with the Obamas. John Stewart, it's pretty obvious, definitely in the pocket of the far left. Barack Obama crashes Stephen Colbert's post-Super Bowl Late Show. So again, more examples of how all of this is controlled, and it's all become much more political. Many, many years ago, before Obama, you didn't see presidents doing this, showing up on late-night talk shows as much as he does, or his wife does. And they might as well, because really that's all they are, are personalities, running the corporation of America. But they're not even really running it. These are puppets. So why not? You might as well just be honest with it and put them out here on these talk shows and have them doing goofy skits. Because we don't take them seriously anyway, do we? Right there with the camera. Who do you think is really in control of the world's policies? The world policies? Or America's policies. Who Probably really who really runs the world? Probably the Illuminati. Am I right on that one? One of the most dangerous things about public education is that, you know, your kids are there on their own. There's other kids and teachers and stuff, sure, but you're not there with them. You don't know what they're being forced to read or forced to understand, right? You don't see these narratives at play. So certainly one of the most dangerous things about public education is the way that government can use it to indoctrinate your child. And it's not just with gay stuff. This stuff's been going on for years. I want to show you a clip here. You may not have seen this. Some of you may have, but it really didn't seem to make the mainstream. It's an example of La Raza. If you're not familiar with La Raza, La Raza is basically the Spanish KKK, the Mexican KKK. But here's an example of how La Raza was showing up in American history books. And once a few parents got a hold of this and saw what was going on, they went and had a talk with the city council. Vendidos means sellouts and kiss the man's ass. Come on, 
ask if I'm sorry, but Dr. Slagman, I'm going to ask that there, the language be not mentioned during public meetings. Okay. We may have right. young people in this room that's inappropriate. You're right. You're right. Thank you, Dr. So these are just some of the things that the millennials are up against. We really are at a time right now where they're truly dismantling America. And they've been doing this for a while, but it's certainly speeding up now. So in many respects, this whole generation of millennials have been indoctrinated to worship the government, if you will. Not that they all do, but many of them seem to have taken to this indoctrination. And we're seeing all the old ways fall apart. We're literally seeing America being dismantled before our very eyes. I want you to check out this clip right here, just an example. It's from an air conditioning company called Carrier. It's one of the biggest air conditioning companies in America. And they recently told some of the people at one of their plants in America this. It became clear that the best way to stay competitive and protect the business for long term is to move production from our facility in Indianapolis to Monterey, Mexico. So there you have it. I just wanted to show you some examples from our recent history of what they've been doing to the millennials, how they've indoctrinated the millennials, how they've placed many of the millennials under mind control. But I hold out hope. I don't believe all millennials are a lost cause. We just have to hope that they can break their conditioning. Hey, thanks for watching.